The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not, in any way, reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. In part one of this three-part series, I shared my personal observations regarding autism in the Philippines and how I got to the point where I suspected myself to be autistic. Now, we share why Filipinos need to learn more from autistics that blended into our society because right now, it sucks to be autistic. Ladies and gentlemen, from its studio south of Manila, IJR Productions presents The Intrepid Show. I am Ian Rinyon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, including being a suspected autistic. And welcome to another episode of The Intrepid Show. This is going to be part two of a three-part ser series regarding autism in the Philippines. And as I said earlier in part one, uh, it's centered on my personal observations of what I think is my autistic brain finally manifesting itself after almost three decades trying to fit in. Here in this video though, we deal with the social aspect of autism in our country and spoiler alert, it's not that good. So a little bit of a trigger warning before I start. Uh, I understand that there will be autistics who would, um, or actual autistics rather, who would be watching this video and uh, it would include uh, mentions or uh, maybe even, you know, even uh, graphics of uh, Puzzle pieces, uh, person first language, and other ableist or neurotypical misunderstandings of autism. So, if this really is something that you're uh, a little bit sensitive about, by all means, uh, skip this video. I, I understand. I totally understand. And besides, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit um, distressed at times uh, when I always see this on uh, this language and uh it really uh, it really hits me hard during the time that i'm researching this but as an autistic i have to, as a suspected autistic for that matter i just have to uh, get this sorted out all right so again if uh if any if any and all of the references here that are uh, noted as ableist or neurotypical uh, for, for actual autistics, please, uh, by all means, uh, skip this video. But if uh, you're good with it uh, and uh, you're basically, you know, you basically want to hear me out on why I think this is, you know, this is very uh, controversial, all of these, you know, all of these uh, uh, stuff, by all means, uh, please continue. But if it's really triggering, I understand. All right? So let's get on with it. The year 2021 was a memorable year for me. You see, every July, as a way of honoring St. Ignatius of Loyola, which is ironic for someone like me because right now, I am wearing... I'm wearing a school shirt uh, from my university, the University of Santo Tomas. So it's really ironic. <laughs> but hey, he is a Catholic saint and uh, he's one of my inspirations as well in making... in. Uh, being uh, or striving to be holy as long as I live but, yeah but as a way of honoring St. Ignatius of Loyola every July I lay low on a lot of things and try to be less passive aggressive on every in everything weeks prior I asked my mother if there was something going on in my brain because I have been distracted too much and I was too upset if important things do not go my way and she told me I might have a listen maybe if I remember it correctly, she told me, Anak, my pedia told me you might have signs that you might be autistic. Uh, of course, uh, she didn't say it that way. Hindi naman yun verbatim, but you get the point. And she also told me that I might have ADHD or uh, both autism and ADHD. So if ever you want to know why 
I suspect myself to be autistic with an ADHD comorbidity, check out the part, check out part one. I'll link it up there in the upper right, so that you can watch that watch that first before this one, and then just come back. Because of these suspicions and thanks to online self-assessment tools, I eventually discerned that I might be autistic after all. But of course, finding people like me is very rare and very hard to find. It gets harder because of the layers of masks actually autistic Filipino adults have to wear in order not to be obviously autistic, which which really is unfortunate. But I'll tell you later how I'm doing so far. Add into the mix as well the factor of focusing more on the parents of autistic kids instead of the autistic folks themselves. Which brings us to five things that are being debated between actual autistics and neurotypicals advocating about autism. First, you have parent-led autism groups versus autistic-led autism groups. Second is autism as a disease versus autism as a mental health condition. Third, person first versus identity first labels of autism. Fourth is the blue puzzle piece and uh, versus the red, gold, or rainbow infinity symbol. And finally, the Autism Society Philippines versus autistic Filipino self-advocacy individuals and groups. So those are the five things and I'm going to uh, detail them one by one in this video. Firstly, parents with all their good intentions think that they know all about autism because their child is autistic and they know th they know of the traits they have observed or from what uh, from what their parents told them of what they observed from their own autistic children. They seem to be oblivious or they do not care at all about autistic adults trying to help them. That these parents think they contribute to the awareness and acceptance of autism but are in fact doing more harm than good with their sob stories and pretentiousness. Of course, not all parents of autistic children are like this. It's just that a majority of them are. And prior to the recording of this, you know, of this uh, video, I've actually had a chat with a parent of an autistic child. And she told me, Ian, maraming salamat para dito sa, sa, ano, sa paggawa mo. Because I, uh, I sense that we parents of autistic children should consult autistic adults with how on earth am I, are we going to help our children and uh, basically um, uh, close the gap between between us and them or us and you, kumbaga. And I very much commend the very few parents of autistic children who somehow uh, want to make a, con a, good, a very good conversation and want to learn more from autistic folks like myself so that's that however a majority of these parents of autistic children would even in invalidate actually autistic adults whenever they share their experience by saying oh really, really? But, but you, you don't, don't look, look autistic, autistic to me. me or in tagalog because actually autistic adults think that one no two autistic people are alike and the mantra that uh, autistic self-advocates are saying is that if you met one autistic person, you met one autistic person, which is, which is actually true. And two, parents of autistic children have not yet realized and probably either, either refuse to believe or are in denial that they themselves might be autistic or someone in their extended family is. I have stressed in the neurodiversity video that the ideal is that actual autistics should lead groups about autism. Also, parents of autistic children should be open to dialogue with actual autistics to close the gap on autism and understanding it. I can tell you about it because I just attempted to do that. And uh, basically, I have uh, results on both sides of the coin. Some are successful, some are not. But then again, that's life. Then some parents think and rather erroneously that autism can be cured, treated, or at least ruled out 
just like what Candy Pangilinan thought with uh, her autistic son, Quentin. There are other parents who understand that autism is a lifelong condition that, that they should worry about for the rest of their lives. And for severe cases, those who needed ASD level 3 intervention, rightfully so. However, they still think interventions like Applied Behavioral Analysis or ABA would help autistic children when autistic adults who went underwent ABA say otherwise, even to the point that they say it's a traumatic, traumatic experience similar to the Pavlov experiment. And uh, yung parent, the parent that, uh, the parent of that autistic child that I have, uh, that I have talked to prior to this recording, said that uh, she agrees that ABA is not really the answer for uh, uh, for autistic. Uh, persons who wanted to uh, wanted to uh, regulate their uh, no, their autistic traits. So that's that. Unfortunately, there are only a few parents who not only accept their children's autism, but also try to resonate if they themselves might be autistic, but have just masked very efficiently throughout their lives. And this is where autistic adults can help since they are aware of their own conditions, whether through an official diagnosis like the people I have encountered in the aftermath of my video regarding neurodiversity, or through self-help assessments and resonations from actual autistic adults like what I have done. In short, autism is a lifelong condition. It can never be cured. It just needs to be accepted, understood, and studied further with autistics as partners in the research. This, honestly, should be obvious, given the past few videos. But there is a problem about using the identity first term autistic in the Filipino context, which also means autistic Filipino adults are forced to mask. In our social media atm atmosphere, the term is used in various shit posting groups as a pejorative slur to people who seem to be irrationally upset regarding something. And that is unfortunate. I did reply in one such comment, understanding one's frustration about his ideological opposition, but at the same time, called him out for using the term autistic outside the mental health context, saying that it is a disservice to officially diagnosed autistic Filipino adults who have been stigmatized for so long. And the misuse of the term by Partido Reforma leader Pantaleon Alvarez did not help. On a side note, his last-minute decision to ditch Panfilo Lacson for Lenny Robredo in the race to the Malacanang is questionable in itself, but that's another topic for another day. And uh, given that this recording was in on May 8th, I wanna just leave it for another topic, okay? Autism tayo ngayon, hindi politika. Also, TV series and movie portrayals such as Budoy and Boyet further created stigma about what and how autistic adults look like. And they absolutely do not look like Budoy and Boyet all the fucking time. However, the use of person-first language in the Filipino context creates more problems than solutions, particularly in terms of semantics and preference. The term person or persons with autism is problematic in the semantic context because according to actual autistics, such wording indicates that ASD is a condition that can be taken away from a person experiencing it, which is fallacious. Also, a majority of actual autistics, autistic self-advocates, and even parents of autistic children and mental health professionals and educators specializing in autism prefer identity-first language. Not only out of brevity, and I concur with the autistic labeling even if I was neurotypical, but also because they see autism not as something people have, but as an integral part of who they are. And I myself think the same thing. Again, this should be obvious. The puzzle piece was originally used with the rationale that autism is a mysterious or puzzling condition. While the color blue, as mentioned in the very first video, 
was initially used by Autism Speaks. While it is still puzzling at this point, actual autistics see the puzzle piece as a revulsive sign because they think the puzzle piece indicate that autism and autistics are puzzling or have missing pieces in their brains or neurotypicals believe it so. Sounds gross, right? In short, autism is puzzling but autistics are not. That's why actual autistics rephrase the narrative of autism and see it as a condition where one's brain is differently wired and the wiring of such autistic brains vary from person to person again. If you met one autistic person, you met one autistic person. Thus, an infinite possibility of wiring combinations. Yes, this is why actual autistics prefer the infinity loop sign and would like to light it up red instead. In a rainbow of colors or in gold because AU is the chemical abbreviation of gold. Plus, the wider neurodiversity movement accepted the rainbow colors to denote how diverse the spectrum is. Currently, at the point of this video's release, we Filipinos may or may not still be in the election fever. And uh, actually, it's more in the former because this video was uh, created on the 8th of May 2022, the day before the national elections. And certain candidates have worn red as their campaign color. So that's out of the question for now. Kaya I just had to wear gold as, as of now. So basically, we either employ gold for autism and the rainbow spectrum for neurodiversity. Although, I still see the sunflower as a general sign for neurodiversity. But then again, I digress. And in speaking of autistic self-advocates, it seems that in the Filipino context of autism, Philippine organizations and groups talking about autism seem to be catering to neurotypical parents, relatives, and friends of autistic individuals and not to autistic persons themselves. It seemed that these organizations and groups about autism dismiss autistic adults from the conversation. During the research and script writing phase of this three-part series, I thought the search for neurodivergent Filipino adults and groups of such on social media would be difficult. I even thought they do not exist online. So, uh, actually it is difficult, but the, on the latter statement, without divulging anything at this point, I was glad to be corrected. And upon digging deeper, the Autism Society Philippines, or ASP, seem to be dismissing autistic Filipino voices, especially certain autistic individuals who were once connected to them. Probably just because they and their mindset regarding autism exist. That neurotypicals should never deal with anything about autism without autistics involved. Or the slogan, Nihil de nobis sine nobis, nothing about us without us. A Tagalog estimation for this phrase would be, Kung wala kami, wag na lang. But according to a blog I just discovered, and I'm quite surprised, this existed for almost 10 Fucking years now, with all the ramblings the blogger has made during that time, a certain autistic person suggested a more positive slogan, albeit longer than the original. Everything about us and for us has to be with us and by us. My suggestion though is shorter. We know who we are and we can do it ourselves. It is such a shame that perhaps life caught up with the blogger and ironically, the final entry was on the 29th of January of Anos Horribilis 2020. But the challenge to our rather neurotypical Filipino society still remains. Up until this point, the ASP have not yet been inclusive in their advocacy to accept autism as a lifetime mental health condition that can be regulated but cannot be eradicated. They also have a long way to go in entering into dialogue with autistic Filipino adults who genuinely would love to help parents of autistic children to A, accept their children's autism, and B, discover the prospect that they might be autistic themselves. Bridges must be built, gaps must be closed, and ideas about autism must be reviewed and discussed with autistic individuals leading them. In short, autistic self-advocacy should not only be encouraged, but should be also supported and put on the spotlight. But until there are still neurotypical 
people in autism groups still refusing to sit down with actual autistic Filipinos and letting their voices heard and their questions answered. The situation regarding autistic acceptance in our country would only go either nowhere or in circles. And in speaking of autistic representation, given that we have mentioned Budoy and Boyet, we have major stereotypes in the international scene as well, from savants like Dr. Sean Murphy from The Good Doctor or Raymond from Rain Man, to bullied burdens in sob story movies where one of the characters play as a young autistic child or teenager and all the characters around him or her express pity for the said character or wished he or she was not autistic in the first place, to severely autistic characters like Forrest Gump and the girl from Sia's film Music. Yes, we, that is the movie which is absolutely abhorred by both the autistic community and film critics alike. But since then, many actors who portray autistic characters take the time to research and internalize their roles. A few of them even suspecting themselves to be on the spectrum and eventually got diagnosed autistic. Eventually, in response to the music shit show, cinematographers and storytellers actively looked for autistic people who can very much play the role of autistic characters, with more women portrayed for that matter, such as Kayla Cromer playing Matilda Moss in Everything's Gonna Be Okay, and Chloe Hayden as Quinny in the 2022 re Netflix reboot of the Australian rom-com series Heartbreak High. Actually, I have something that I uh, said here in the script na medyo may patama kay Sia, but I guess, ano, I guess I just have to let the other actual statistics do that because they have more say on that than I do because I only suspect myself if I'm diagnosed, they are, they are already diagnosed and they have all the fucking right to say what they want to say. I'll leave it at that. So I'll skip that part of the script. But I would just like to know if there is any possibility that Aubrey Miles would return to Pinoy Showbiz and accept or create roles playing autistic women given that she has an autistic daughter and might possibly be autistic herself? Or is there a possibility that the slapstick comedian turned beauty queen Herlene Budol take the time to research and really know for herself about autism in Filipino women and why they always had to mask themselves? Although, I do commend her for or her other, you know, her other uh, perspectives regarding uh, in vitro fertilization as well as uh, homosexual pageants, homosexual and transgender pageants. So, uh, I do commend her perspective on that. But I, I would just like to know if she would very much research about autism. Because the only thing that I can say here is that only time will tell. But given the current perspective of autism in the Philippines, we might never see this changed in our lifetime unless actually autistic Filipino adults and Filipino autistic self-advocates are involved in the discussion. And don't even get me started with autistic head cannons because it's a different beast of its own that I can put my hat on the ring in the future. But for starters, many autistics think Elsa and Anna from Frozen are both autistic, and I honestly agree. I can definitely tell. My partner and I very much resonated from their characters. I mean, irrational behavior, info dumping, taking risks, those are autistic behaviors. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them show, don't let them know. Any autistic can recognize that as masking. In conclusion, proper understanding of autism in the Philippines would still have a long way to go and frankly, it's going to be a long ride for suspected autistic people like me. It is also such a shame that no one running for national office aside from Salvador Panelo, whose reputation and intention I still question, and uh, and uh, for the record, he is not on my list, have safeguarded the welfare of neurodivergent Filipinos, and especially autistic ones. Nevertheless, small steps were gained in including neurodivergent children into our schools. And nevertheless, we who hide behind the masks of anonymity and functionality have to reveal to our countrymen why autistic voices matter. Because despite the different wiring of our brains, we are just like the rest of humanity. That we are different. 
but not less. But until our rather neurotypical Filipino society listens to actually autistic Filipinos who would like to be of service to the country not only in what they, they do, but also in creating an atmosphere of dialogue about autism and not that of dictatorship by neurotypicals, autistic Filipinos will keep on encouraging those who are willing to understand their brains to debunk and correct misconceptions about autism and will keep on fighting for their right to be true to their autistic selves. In the final part of this series, I would like to dive as deep as I can in what I can consider as autistic coded songs made by the 90s alternative band Eraserheads. I also wonder if Eli Buendi himself is autistic. Well, <laughs> the video just cut, so um, I might as well just uh, do this uh, final part of this uh, of this video raw. So, uh, we have actually come to the end of uh, this video, of this part two of a three-part series on autism in the Philippines. If you like what you just watched, I would really appreciate it if you would comment below what you think about this topic, share this video around, and leave a thumbs up. While you're at it, subscribe as well to my channel and ring the notification bell by selecting all. If you financially can, I would also appreciate your donations through Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, Ko-Fi, or PayPal. All the links to them are in the description below. So, with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon reminding you to at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, take care of yourself and your brain, and as always, thank you for watching. See you next time, and please, please know that you are never alone. Ian out. <laughs> Sheesh, that's crazy. Ecolalia moment. <laughs> uh. So, with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon reminding you. Ah, mali. So, with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon reminding you to be uh, uh, to at all times. Fuck me. Closing spiel na to. Ay, hindi. Nagkat na siya. Shit!